everyone, it is time now for part two of my Oklahoma Sooner football preview for 2016. Part number two, it is about the defense. Remember two years ago, as the season progressed for Mike Stoops' defense, they were getting gouged. I mean, they were giving up a lot of big yardage, vulnerable to the big play, and of course, uh, giving up a plethora of points and finishing 8-5. and five. Defense didn't help in that regard. Last year, remarkable improvement. you got to commit Mike Stoops' defense. They uh, definitely progressed, and you could see at the bottom of the screen, boy, number one in the Big 12 in scoring D. And that's not easy to do because of the high-powered Big 12 offenses, but also tops in passing D and overall defense, and number two in rushing D. So Again, remarkable improvement for Mike Stoops' defense. And during this year, I think they're going to be pretty solidified at the line spot, okay? This is going to be a big-time player for the Sooners. Even though I know Charles Tapper's gone, he was impact before them. But another Charles has an opportunity to be the anchor for this line. I'm talking about Charles Walker. Charles Walker played every game last year except for one, but it was a big one. It was that uh, semifinal against Clemson, and there's no question it was a glaring omission. And Clemson took advantage because they had their way as far as the line of scrimmage. And there's no doubt that uh, Walker's absence in that game was a big factor in OU not being able to come through. But still, um, Walker did play in the other 12, and how about this? Not bad. 36 tackles, 10 for loss, and over 6 sacks. He's at 6'2", 304, but of course, you know, don't let that size fool you. We know he has the power, but also, too, he's got quickness and enough speed to make life havoc for the opposition's backfield. So, Charles Walker wanted to watch. Another one to watch, too, will be the other uh, player occupying defensive end, and that's going to be Matt Diamond. And Matt Diamond, no question, um, last year showed what he could do uh, throughout the season, especially in the Big 12 opener against West Virginia, his best game where he had seven tackles, and for the season he had 34. Not quite as big as Walker at 6'2", 265, but he can definitely hold his own. In fact, the Sooners should be able to hold their own in this department, talking about the position of defensive end. Should have a pretty good rotation because you're going to have the likes of a veteran like DJ Ward, the one-time sophomore uh, product last year as a sophomore, had 19 tackles. So you know that um, you know, he's been through it before. And a new addition to the Sooners, and I, I don't think they're going to redshirt this guy, Amani Bledsoe, one of their prized recruits um, last year out of the Kansas area, 6'5", 265. Now, you're starting defensive tackle right now. That looks like it's going to be Matt Romar, who had 23 tackles a year ago. The junior at 6 foot even at 298, and backing him up. The veteran entering his senior year. Boy, time flies, doesn't it, for uh, Jordan Wade, who also, just like Romar, had 23 tackles, 6'3", at uh, 311. Feel good about that defensive line. So do I feel just as confident about the linebacking unit? Well, I feel pretty good about Jordan Evans. <laughs> I guess we'll start there with the positive, okay? Evans, a uh, full-time starter last season, um, had his breakthrough season, all right? Over 80 tackles a year ago as a junior. And now, of course, an upperclassman who should be the leader of this linebacking core that, again, will run primarily out of the 3-4 alignment. As far as the other full-time linebacking starters this year for Oklahoma, well, I just named him, Jordan Evans. That's right, he's it. Uh, you lose Dominic Alexander, you lose Eric Stryker. That's a mouthful alone because they not only had nice 2015s, but nice careers as well, and they were both all Big 12 from a year ago. They're not going to be able to replace that. They're not going to be able to, but you need to be serviceable in this area. By the way, you got to replace Frank Shannon, who was a part of the OU program for quite a while. So the other inside linebacker is going to be Tay Evans. Okay, Tay Evans, who last season as a freshman uh, played in 10 out of uh, 13 games. The other linebackers that are slated to start have even less experience for the Sooners, and we're talking about um, Obaniah Okurinkwo. Okurinkwo played 9 out of 13 games in 2015. And the other um, linebacker on the outside played in the junior college ranks. Okay, we're talking about Capri Doucette. He was a star in junior college, but now... Up to the big leagues, as they once said, and Doucette will have to show what he could do as a starter on the outside. So, linebacking core, um, this is the one area where people are going to be very, very nervous about, and rightfully so. And by the way, um, Caleb Kelly will probably end up playing as well. He was Oklahoma's only five-star recruit from this recent class, and of course he signed on the dotted line on National Signing Night. Not day, but night. He waited until the evening time. Um, Kept Sooner fans in suspense 
before he made his decision to come to Norman. So good to have him here, and we'll see if the linebacking core can be serviceable. They're not going to be as good as last year. They just can't be blowing assignments. They can't be missing tackles. They really need to be in tune mentally and need to progress. Again, that first game against Houston, against Greg Ward Jr., a very good quarterback, um, will be a nice test for the uh, linebacking court. All right, let's talk about the secondary. A solid unit, yes, even though I know they lose Zach Sanchez, who was a fifth-round draft pick for the Carolina Panthers. My thoughts on that, i got mixed emotions on one hand. Yeah, he was a uh, interception guru throughout his career. On the other hand, though, at times he kind of pissed you off because he did give up uh, some big plays from time to time. So I think the Sooners are going to be fine at corner. Of course, Jordan Thomas uh, could be uh, one of the most impactful defensive players. He was last year with five interceptions, a terrific cover guy, a guy that I think will be playing in the NFL one day. You'll definitely uh, see him on Sundays. Um, the athletic ability, the speed, and we know this because of the um, ability to break to the ball, terrific cover guy, and of course can run one back for a touchdown like he did last year against Oklahoma State. Um, on the field, he's amazing. Off the field, just stay away from trouble, Jordan, okay? No more altercations. Um, just stay away from trouble. And he's not, he's not going to miss any games, but he's got to keep squeaky clean off the field. That's very important. The other corner looks like the code to Austin will occupy Sanchez's old spot. And remember, Austin came in last year when, um, I guess, Texas Tech, Sanchez had that injury. Well, it was Austin who not only came into play, but he came ready to play with 11 tackles and an interception in that game against the uh, Red Raiders. So the code to Austin, uh, we know he can do it. And the corner position, I think there's going to be some depth in this area. Much needed depth. Um, you have P.J. and Banasaur. Remember, he got an education last year when pass happy Tulsa went right after him. That was the one game where Jordan Thomas didn't play. And Banasaur took his spot. And, of course, and Banasaur was getting absolutely targeted um, by the Tulsa quarterbacks. And they knew where Banasaur was at. They knew where the freshman was. Sometimes it takes experiences like that rough experience that Banasaur had against Tulsa to realize where you're at as a player and your progression that you need to make. And entering this year, I think he'll be much more prepared that you're experienced and valuable, in my opinion. A um, couple of new guys that could very well play at corner. We'll have to wait and see if they play or if they get redshirted. I think Parrish Cobb's going to play, okay? Cobb was an original Oklahoma commitment until signing day, in which he signed with Baylor. But, of course, Art Bryles gets fired at Baylor. Some things happen at Baylor that, you know, just make you ill to your stomach. Well, I guess it made... Cobb ill because he left the program and recommitted to the Sooners and um, hearing great things about him during August practices. And um, another valuable uh, guy that oh, you got from that recruiting class, Jordan Parker out of California, could very well play as well. Now, the nickelback position, when OU goes through a 3-3-5 alignment, look for Will Johnson, okay, who a year ago uh, played 11 out of 13 games, and by the way, um, he started in three of them. Um, so look for Will Johnson at that nickel spot um, uh, to come in focused. And then the two safeties, this is a very good tandem for Oklahoma. Okay, you've got the veteran on one hand and Ahmad Thomas, the Miami Central product, now entering his senior season. Of the 39 games um, that uh, he's been involved in, he's played in 38 of them. Of course, he's a two-year starter. And uh, by the way, if you're curious too, Ahmad Thomas, has had 150 tackles over the last two seasons, 75 each year. And finally, Stephen Parker. Stephen Parker, he started ever since his freshman year, now entering his junior year. Uh, of course, the hero in the game against Texas Christian last year in which he broke up the two-point conversion pass that preserved the one-point Oklahoma win and kept their Big 12 and college football playoff dreams alive. Um, but Stephen Parker, an impactful player um, at his safety spot, him and Ahmad Thomas. Now for the special teams for the Sooners, Austin Seifert, kicker, yeah, 19 of 24, but the true freshman was also the team's punter. You don't see that too often, a dual kicker punter on the major college football level, but he was average 42 yards per punt. And again, you got him for the next three years. Um, we remember Alex Ross as a uh, fantastic kick returner throughout his career, but his eligibility ran out. So expect uh, Joe Mixon uh, to take on uh, more of that uh, responsibility. 
in terms of uh, kick returning. And as far as punt returning right now, it looks like Jarvis Baxter, the uh, wideout, is the uh, number one guy to uh, be returning punts. Definitely is a pressure pack position, the punt returner. Well, that's my look at defense as well as special teams for Oklahoma. Got one more part to go, and of course, that's going to be breaking down the Oklahoma schedule in my prediction for what I think is going to happen to the 2016 Oklahoma Sooners. Check out my third and final part of my Oklahoma preview on the next video. Thanks for watching.